Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel. The text is Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. The Reverend Dr. Stephen O'Canna is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The Holy Scripture appointed for this day is recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem, You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. But you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The ascension event in Bethany, the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, echoes God's promises fulfilled through his Son. It's simple, it's beautiful, and elegant. This Friday, today, It's the eve of the Memorial Day weekend. Not a lot of gatherings due to COVID-19, not a lot of family events or barbecues, but perhaps a good time to remember the heart of Memorial Day itself. As a chaplain who served 26 years in the Army, it's important to remember those who fell in service to our country. We should, as Americans, and we ought as citizens of the two kingdoms, remember those who died, those who did not come home those who rest in places like Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, Arlington in Virginia, Jefferson Barracks in Missouri, and the Punch Bowl in Hawaii. As citizens of two kingdoms, we remember those who died and the Savior who conquered hell, death, and the grave. Ascension Day is that time in the church year where Christians celebrate the ascension of Jesus and his triumphal soon return. So there's discussion about the end of time, eternal change, and the hope of everlasting life. This is about the fulfillment of the prophecies, the reason behind Jesus' suffering, the forgiveness of sins, Pentecost in Jerusalem, the sending of the Holy Spirit. All the while, the Lord tells us to respond with great joy. So, how are you today? The COVID-19 is a real drag on the community and the individual. Routines are disrupted. And living in community is stunted and stretched to the limit. Relationships are suffering with concern over self-medication, domestic violence, and suicide. But God's love for us continues. It's consistent and unending. Even when the world and our own little world is a bushel basket filled with uncertainty. Because we don't know the future, we try to fill that void with worry fear, real concern about tomorrow. Perhaps the greatest frustration of humanity is that of our finiteness. We know that we are operating on a limited agenda. Death has its icy stare on us, waiting for the unknown moment when you least expect it. It will take hold of you, and that is the end. Is that the Christian life? Is that what we truly are? Dumb as sheep, waiting in line for the slaughter? In Romans chapter 8, St. Paul asks the question, Are we as sheep led to the slaughter? The reason we are in this condition is not news to us. We are sinful. So, saturated are we in our blindness that we feel it daily. Sometimes we think that even God cannot rescue us. You see, in our depth of blindness, some even limit the Almighty. Luther said this about sin. He said, we are not sinners 
because we sin, but we commit sin because we are sinners. We hear the words of our God when he declares that there is not even one person in the history of humanity who is without this painful condition. Do you feel the pain of sin? Are you weary of this world? Have you lost focus as to who you are? Have you looked up to God and cried as David, king of Israel, once did, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony, as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? So how does our God respond? Well, by seeing you who you are, by sending someone in your life to buy you back from your oppressors. God gives us neither great wealth nor magical powers. He gives us a great stand-in, his son, our Savior Jesus, someone to take the full brunt of sin, death, Satan, and the challenges that this world can dish out at us. He heaps them on his shoulders on cavalry, and return gives us the crown of life, hope, happiness, and salvation. And so the message of salvation is focused for us in the words of Christ, reinforced by the angels in the first chapter of the book of Acts. Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here considering the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Do you know what this ascension event makes you? Someone chosen. You are holy. You are set apart by God himself. It is by his activity that you are made holy, that you are set apart, and that you are chosen. You know, it's always an honor to be recognized and acknowledged by peers and colleagues and friends. To be a person of outstanding fortitude. But you who are listening this morning are recognized and honored, not by men, not by friends, not by colleagues, and not with trophies made of plastic or bronze. You are acknowledged for what Christ has won for you. You are given a crown, eternal life given through Jesus Christ our Lord. So whether you served in the military or have a loved one who served, it's important to remember the highest calling as a child of God. It's living a daily life of repentance. To count your service as a citizen in the redemption of the kingdom of God. Like all things, they come and go. But the kingdom of the Lord Christ extends forever. So as citizens of the two kingdoms, and on this weekend of Memorial Day, it is a good thing that we pause and remember those who died for our country. It is a good thing that we give thanks to God for their service and their sacrifice. Those that died did all they could to guarantee our freedom as a loving God guarantees our salvation, except our God triumphs and perseveres over all things. The challenge for this weekend is to be thankful and to remember those who died in the defense of our country. Another challenge is that in which the St. Paul Apostle extends to the people in Ephesus, where he says, May you be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have been called. How can we know this hope? Well, Paul would tell you to never lose sight of it, to keep yourself from sin, to avoid temptation. Don't put yourself in a position to compromise your Christian faith. As churches open up, partake in the gifts he's given you. Worship in his holy house. Partake in the Lord's Supper. 
but you can also, while you are still here in your home, to come to him daily in prayer. Always remember that God pours out his love on you, and he loves you with a deep, deep and abiding love. Like the raging waters of an endless waterfall, his gifts continue to be poured out upon us. For our risen and ascended Lord, we give thanks and praise. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for Michael and Nancy Jane Maurizio, who serve the Lord in Italy. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.